Welcome to ILTV's TV's Israel Daily. I'm Aaron Porras. And coming up in today's newscast, danger in the north and south. Israel responds to terror attacks from opposite sides overnight. New daily recorded coronavirus infections see a remarkable drop in Israel. But is there more to the story? And finally, major news in the world of entertainment. Stay tuned for the rundown with ILTV's own Emmanuel Kadosh. Tensions along Israeli borders rising rapidly. Attacks from north and south reported by the IDF overnight. Nitney Manson has the details. A peaceful evening broken. Southern Israeli families enjoying an inaugural film at a drive-in movie theater interrupted by rocket fire from the Gaza Strip. This the first rocket attack from Gaza in nearly a month when three rockets were fired into southern Israel on July 5th. Thankfully though, Israel's Iron Dome defense battery intercepted at least one projectile fired towards the city of Sderot. The only reported damage is a piece of shrapnel landing on a car. Now no group has claimed responsibility for the attack yet, but the IDF holds the Hamas terror organization responsible for all violence from the Strip. As such, the IDF has reportedly struck several Hamas facilities overnight in retaliation, including a concrete manufacturing site and several underground facilities. Meanwhile, in the north, four suspects, some of whom were armed, crossed into Israel from Syria and planted an improvised explosive device inside an IDF outpost. IDF special forces units and aircraft opening fire upon the group, killing them all. No Israeli soldiers were injured. Similar to the rocket launch, however, we do not yet know what group the suspects are affiliated with, if any. Military spokesperson Hidai Zilberman says an investigation has been opened. This comes as tensions with Hezbollah are nearing a fever pitch, the Lebanese-based Iranian proxy group having failed a recent attempted infiltration, vowing retaliation for the death of a fighter in Syria last month. So who was behind the latest attacks against Israel, and what do they mean for the future? Joining us with more is Lieutenant Colonel Sarit Zehavi, CEO and founder of the Alma Research and Educational Center. Thank you so much for being with us. Now, starting with the fact that, that we saw two attacks more or less simultaneously, do you suspect any sort of coordination between northern and southern militants? This could be an option that I cannot overrule, but I don't have any proofs for that for now. Mm. And, and then... You know, this is not the first recent security incident, of course, on the northern border of Israel. Do you predict a serious escalation anytime soon? Actually, and maybe it's a wishful thinking, I would want to believe that uh, this was uh, the end of this round. Let's put it this way. I'm not sure when, when the, the, the second round would begin or the next one. So, so do you believe then that this is Hezbollah, that this latest incursion was another Hezbollah attack? Yes, I believe it's Hezbollah. We know that Hezbollah is holding uh, two units in the Syrian Golan. One of them named the Golan Portfolio is the one that I believe responsible for this attack. Uh, the Golan Portfolio mission is to plan, gather intelligence and carry out a terrorist attack exactly like this one by using uh, Syrian proxies on the border, locals proxies on the border. So are these not necessarily militants from Hezbollah, but, but rather, you know, untrained individuals? No, they are affiliated to Hezbollah, they are subordinate to Hezbollah, but they are not Lebanese. I see. All right, yeah, because, you know, the IDF outpost that was targeted uh, is essentially unmanned, and this comes after alleged Hezbollah suspects recently attempted to infiltrate the border in broad daylight, you know, could it be that neither of these attempts, again, were conducted by, by the best of the best that Hezbollah has to offer? I wouldn't think so. First, I think these were two completely different incidents. The first one from the Lebanese border is an incident that we don't understand completely uh, what exactly happened there. The second one from the Syrian border yesterday night is very clear. A uh, few, uh, as I've said, proxies of Hezbollah were coming uh, to the border trying to put some uh, explosives over there. 
in a way that it could have damaged not necessarily a position, but maybe an IDF mobile patrol. Mm. Now, if, if we look at, at some of these recent attacks, you know, is it possible, uh, or rather, is, is it possible that they were meant to fail in, in a sense? That, uh, that, that they were meant to fail, so just like, again, attacking in broad daylight or this uh, attack against an unmanned uh, outpost the, w was meant to really kind of save face on Hezbollah's side but not provoke Israel into anything larger? I wouldn't take uh, the issue of daylight as an indication to anything. Last year it was also an attack on daylight and uh, they missed uh, only in an inch and we were very lucky. Uh, I, I believe that uh, at least the second attack, which we can understand, is a deliberate attack and the target were IDF soldiers. In these two times, uh, nothing happened. So IDF succeeded and all this uh, uh, preparedness of the forces was very effective. And I hope it, it will be still effective in the future. It doesn't necessarily mean that Hezbollah didn't mean to harm anybody. All right, now earlier you mentioned that you hope you know, that this is kind of the, the winding down of hostilities, uh, of the recent flare up in, his, in hostilities between the IDF and Hezbollah. Uh, but Hezbollah is vowing retaliation for the death of one of their militants in Syria, uh, allegedly by an Israeli airstrike. And, and so far, neither of these past two attacks, assuming that they are Hezbollah, were successful. So you know, are, is this the winding down or is there more to come? You know, Hezbollah is uh, building its own narrative, and he can find any excuse he wants to stop this round. It's in the hands of Nasrallah that, by the way, will speak uh, tomorrow on, on Wednesday night. So uh, we'll wait a little bit and see. Uh, we had, like, like last year, that Hezbollah tried to attack IDF soldiers, told one narrative that was, that was not true about killing of IDF soldiers, and eventually it was the end of the round. So it's an option, and I hope that this, this uh, will be the same this time because there are a lot of pressures on Hezbollah. And I think that Hezbollah is very committed to its promises uh, to retaliate, but I'm not sure it's committed to the success of the retaliation. I see. All right. Now, final question. You know, why do you believe that the IDF exposed this attack on video and not the previous attack? Well, first, in this attack, actual terrorists were killed. And you can see that very clearly. In this attack, there is a fence where you can see very clearly that they were approaching the fence. I don't know exactly how the videos of the IDF looks like in the, in the previous attack and what's their quality. But uh, here they had a very clear video that shows the incident. All right. Lieutenant Colonel, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. Moving back to coronavirus now, the health ministry is claiming small victories as the daily infection numbers are down and stimulus payments are up. But a closer look at the data shows that this may not be the whole picture. אפשר גם להשיג הישג בשטח. זה טוב, אבל זה ודאי לא מספיק. Israeli authorities pointing to Israel's gains against the COVID-19 pandemic on Sunday. The health ministry logging just 421 new coronavirus infections from Saturday to Sunday night, down dramatically from the nearly 2,000 daily infections reported last week. So speaking from the Coronavirus Control Center at the Sheba Medical Center, officials are explaining the current steps taken and the next steps in line towards defeating the virus, all while urging the public to continue working together. It's very important in this time. I know it's a time that's called between the times. It's a time where there are a return of the students. It's very important for us to keep the rules. It's very important for us to continue to raise the temperature. וזה תלוי במשמעת של כולנו, בשיתוף פעולה. זה תלוי בראשי הרשויות, זה תלוי במנהיגי המגזר, וזה תלוי במנהיגים הדתיים, במנהיגים הפוליטיים, זה תלוי בכולכם. But only parts of the puzzle are exposed. Reports showing that while counted infections are down, so are the number of tests. In fact, far from the 30,000 daily tests conducted last week and the goal of 100,000 daily tests by this winter, Israel conducted less than 8,000 tests Saturday night. 
So of course the confirmed number of positive infections are down, but the infection rate of 8.4% remains, meaning in real terms that new infections are likely the same if not higher than before. At any rate, the new cumulative number of cases reported is now above 73,000, over 25,000 actively sick, 334 in serious condition far above the government's so-called red line, and the death toll rising to a whopping 541 as of this reading. Meantime, stimulus payments continue to be dished out. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Finance Minister Israel Katz, and National Insurance Institute Director General Meir Spiegler hailing the stipends and promising more to come. Speaking of spending, millions of shekels in development and advertising are seemingly circling the drain, seriously calling into question the value of Israel's national virus tracing app. I'm again too. Israel's second iteration of its coronavirus contact tracer is failing to make an impact. Nearly 40% of all the new users deleting the app within just 24 hours after its launch on Sunday. Foreign Affairs and Defense Committee Chair M.K. Zvi Hauser is blaming lack of investment funds for the poor rollout. It's not yet clear, though, why so many people uninstalled so quickly. As opposed to using GPS, Hamagen 2 is Bluetooth-based, and it's considered much more accurate. Now, the coronavirus is ugly and certainly draws focus, but other diseases like cancer do still exist, and Israeli scientists are now unveiling all new methods of early detection. Leading the pack, Ibex Medical Analytics, developing AI-powered cancer diagnostics. Co-founder and CEO Joseph Mossel explains that from Galen, their Galen platform helps pathologists diagnose cancer faster and better. And so far, it's already proven highly effective at detecting breast and prostate cancer, two of the most deadly cancer variations. Highlighting that cancer pathologists are both overloaded and therefore prone to human error, the Galen platform is designed to correct problems within the current analysis process, and the platform is already deployed in Israel, the UK, and France. All right, now get out your chocolates and flower bouquets because Tu B'Av arrives tomorrow night. Marked as the beginning of the grape harvest, the minor Jewish holiday has recently become known as Israel's Valentine's Day. But then before you go off celebrating or making a big deal, ask yourself, is your relationship right for you? Here to shine a light on what to look for and what to look out for is Israeli psychologist Dr. Camila Folkash Levan. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for I'm having me. I'm so happy to have you here. All right, now, many people say that opposites attract. Is that true or, you know, maybe should we find a partner who's closer to our own nature? So yes and no, both, depends, okay? Mm -hmm. On one hand, we, uh, from a genetic perspective, we do look for someone that actually differs from us and that ensures a better genetic quality, so to speak, for the offspring and thereby survival, yeah? yeah. But as far as our goals and motivations for life and like what, how we want to live our life, it is good if there are at least, not everything necessarily, but at least some of the basics, the bigger kind of points do uh, match because otherwise you're pulling in different directions. Well, but that's it. I've heard, I've heard different streams of thought on this. I've heard that, you know, it's good to find somebody who thinks differently than you and maybe rounds you out and covers the bases that you don't. Uh, and then I've heard that, you know, no, you should share vices and, and virtues and do things together to create harmony. Wh which path do you subscribe to? So again, we're talking about the bigger things that are that would be similar, right? So if there's someone that, that is challenging you, but you're also open to that to a certain degree, so this is a beautiful thing because then he completes you. However, if you have really high difficulty with change and he wants to jump from airplanes and take you with, this is a problem, yes? So really, really it depends. All right, so how can we know if our relationship with our partner is right for us? You know, 
what, what are you looking for, basically? So it's very important to understand that, you know, there's this uh, romantic idea in, in uh, pop culture of, you know, the wedding is the happiest day of your life, and this is just fireworks and everything like that. However, like, what, what happens after? Why is the wedding the happiest day of your life? You have a whole life, hopefully, in front of you. And interestingly enough, there is um, a parsha that uh, I heard uh, at one point that it's even in the Torah, right, where they talk about how the more you know a person and the more there is a way for w why to love them, your love will grow. And, 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 and it makes sense from a psychological perspective as well. And I'm sure many of us have experienced this where if you meet somebody and you feel like, wow, you're so attracted to fireworks and everything, except if they're not treating you right, after a while, they're not even attractive. And it does happen the opposite way as well, where you might meet someone and physically maybe you don't find them as interesting and attractive, but they're so bright, they're so interesting, they catch you, and they're the sexiest thing ever. Okay, so, so, so it's important to understand that love, will, love is a verb, and, and it depends on how the person treats you. Look for that. And probably in both parties putting in effort and work to maintain yes. uh, that relationship. All right, well, you know, what are the criteria by which you can examine whether or not a, a relationship is truly healthy? So again, look at look for treatment. Look for not only for the fireworks. Again, I'm, I'm highlighting that because a lot of times we get blinded by that. So once you already establish that you like the person and you find them sexy and it's very important, and again, that's very important, um, try to put that aside for a minute and, and be a little bit more logical and, and do examine a person like you would, let's say, a business partner. You know, put some effort into it. Why? Because you're going to have to live with this human <laughs> and solve problems and, you know, maybe argue some things out and finances and divide those finances and children and how to raise them. So also look for kindness, for kindness of heart. Like, how does this person react to others? Is he willing or she willing to help, uh, willing to be kind? When you disagree, how do you disagree? So people look most of the time for how do they get along when everything is peachy. But where it's really where it's at is that how do you disagree and do you attack each other? or do you as a team work out something on the outside of you? And how do you solve that? Interesting. All right, so now you kind of touched on this a little bit before, but you know, how far does that butterfly in your gut feeling go? You know, should, how, how much should you listen to your gut mm -hmm. and those butterflies versus maybe logic and, and you know, grounded thinking? So you should, it's a great question, you should use both. Okay, because on one hand, we are very, very much guided. We like to think that we're so intellectual and so far evolved, but at the end of the day, we're animals, oh, like I, everybody else. Oh, no, that's where I'm at. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm not false. So why am I saying that? Because there's a lot of research, and it's very interesting. You can actually look it up. There's like some of them are also on videos. How we, how we choose, and usually it's women <laughs> that tend to do the choosing, and we do it by sense of smell, meaning we do smell out the, the, the genome of our partner and we find them more attractive. Interestingly enough, it also is part of it, like part of the health of our partner, which is there, okay? Like first of all, they need to be a little bit different. Second of all, health, we smell it out too. So that's one. So that's part of the, also of this butterfly effect moment. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited. So once you have that and you're very excited about a person, great. Put it aside though for a minute because if he's Take mistreating you, if he's not sure. reliable, if he starts to call you names, beat you up, that is... Yeah, no, that's the, those okay. are red flags. And yes. Those are pretty big red flags. All right, well, for me, I'll, I'll share this with our viewer. You know, what worked for me and my wife is banana pancakes. <laughs> that's it. Make banana pancakes super easy and you'll It's a you'll very, very good idea. Camila, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. All right, in other news, dozens of earthquakes have been reported in or around Israel over the past few weeks. And luckily, they've all been relatively small with little to no damages. But lying along the Dead Sea and Carmel fault lines, Experts predict a massive quake could hit the region at any moment. And that's where Israeli startup Seismic AI steps in. Currently, state-of-the-art earthquake warning systems detect tremors based on location-specific data and years of monitoring. But this doesn't help nations that can't afford it or have just installed such a system. Seismic AI's network, on the other hand, can be implemented rapidly anywhere. And it can accurately discover earthquakes from a wider range of locations. It can predict their impact and it alerts locals for a fraction of the cost. The system is currently piloting in Istanbul, Canada, and the Himalayas. And up now, let's jump into some Israeli and international entertainment news with ILTV's Emmanuel Kadosh. Hey, Aaron. So, like you said, let's jump straight into things. A few weeks ago, we spoke about the young Israeli pop star Noah Kira's epic multi-million dollar music deal 
with Atlantic Records. And now Kiret is gracing the headlines of none other than the Washington Post and repping Israel very proudly. All right, well, that's huge. Obviously, I remember the reports, but what are, what are they talking about in the article specifically? All right, so they started off by talking about Kiret's major musical success since she was 14 years old, but mainly focused around her enlistment into the Israeli Defense Force. The Washington Post article mentioned that for the foreseeable future, every and any media outlet that wants to get an interview with the pop star, every public appearance or photo shoot must be strictly coordinated, coordinated with the IDF. Oh my God, which is probably a huge hassle. I know just from our own dealings with the IDF, it's, <laughs> it's very difficult to schedule with, with a lot of And them. a huge change for her. And a huge change for her. Uh, you know, and, and not every soldier in the Israeli army, you know, she has to be much more censored, obviously, Definitely. Uh, you know, with her comments right, than right. others. Uh, but isn't it true that in her short time in the IDF, she's already actually stirred up some controversies? Yeah, so uh, a short clip of Kirill and two male backup dancers in uniform went viral, which ended up drawing criticism on social media, which then in turn caused the army to actually cancel all military dance roles. Yeah, I remember that. And I think the major issue when it comes to Kirill in the army is uh, also, you know, the anonymity side right. of things. The IDF has a military protocol that's in place in, in order uh, to protect the soldiers and, and the army as a whole. Yeah, and I think that something to note here is that the IDF, while it has enlisted celebrities into the army in the past, thinking, let's say, Gal Gadot, I don't think they ever had to deal with um, the level of fame that Noah Kirill brings to the table just yet. Yeah, absolutely. And, and now that I think about it, you know, she didn't, she didn't, didn't she have the option actually not to enlist into the army because of her celebrity, like other celebrities actually in the past? Right, so it, celebrities like uh, Barafel, you can say, didn't enlist right. because it interfered with their career, but she did make sure to mention that for her it wasn't even a question, and that her and her team informed Atlantic Records during their contract negotiations that she would for sure be going into the Army wow. for two years, no matter what. She said, quote, I felt that because I was famous, I had to serve to set an example to younger people. That's amazing. I know. Prefer. I mean, that's that's... An amazing example. For sure. Uh, but all right, what's what's next in the lineup? So what's up next um, is the topic of some more controversies. Uh, Seth Rogen has gotten himself into some hot waters with his most recent remarks on Mark Maron's uh, WTF podcast a week ago. The actor who actually attended Jewish schools and day camps growing up um, and has never really shied away from his Jewish background said that he was, quote, fed a huge amount of lies about Israel and that he questioned why the state should even exist. Yeah, honestly, I was I was pretty shocked when I first heard right. you know the, this podcast, especially since I know he has a film about Jewish immigrants coming out soon. Very soon, he was originally on this podcast to talk about his upcoming movie, The American Pickle, which, like you said, is focused around a Jewish immigrant in New York City. But in the podcast, he goes on to mention that he felt like he was lied to about how the state of Israel came to be. Yeah, so so since the podcast has come out and people have obviously been outraged and mainly hurt by right. his remarks, you know what's happened since then. So according to reports, the Jewish agency chairman Isaac Hilzog and Seth Rogen got in a call to discuss further his meaning behind everything that was said and to give his perspective on things. Apparently, Rogen went on to clear up that Israel is, of course, very important to him and that he does think uh, Israel must exist. He also mentioned that his words were meant as a joke and that he was just having a humorous conversation with a fellow Jewish comedian. Okay, well, I mean, honestly, I can totally see that being very true right. when it comes to Seth Rogen. He jokes about a lot of things that people, of course, might take more seriously or personally. Right. Uh, for me, you know, his comments just come off as, as ignorant, mm -hmm. uh, not intentionally offensive. But, but it's not so off-brand. It's not so off-brand, right. yeah. And, and if you know his work, you know that, you know, it, it easily could have been 100% in jest. For sure. <laughs> uh, at any rate, thank you so much for the update, Emmanuel. Of course. All right, and now let's take a look at the weather forecast. Tonight should be warm again, with lows across the country averaging around 74 Fahrenheit or 23 degrees Celsius. Then, tomorrow you can expect mostly clear to partly cloudy skies and highs around 92 degrees Fahrenheit or 33 degrees Celsius. And now, of course, before we go, let's take a look at what's going viral in Israel. Tell if the dog is like sad or you know, is the fish messing with him? Oh, I love it. I think the fish was just messing with him. He just he knows that he's safe for now.
Right, that's it for today's news. Today's exchange rate is 3.41 shekels to the American dollar. For more news from ILTV, please like ILTV on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube and Roku TV pages. I'm Aaron Porras. Thank you so much for watching.